Aircraft carriers are monster ships that act as a mobile airbase for both 5,000 crew members and aircraft. They carry supplies not only for the aircraft they're known to carry, but also necessities for the human crew, including food and water. U.S. aircraft carriers can stay at sea for very long periods of time, and most of the time they're on international waters far away from home. The sailors and crew don't exactly have the luxury of stopping at port to restock on fresh water. So how does the U.S. Navy hydrate its sailors and crew members? The answer isn't far at sea as you might think. In fact, the answer is the sea. They turn seawater into fresh drinking water. But how do they do this? The process of turning salty seawater into drinkable fresh water is called desalination. It simply involves removing the salt and other minerals from seawater to make it safe to drink. But as simple as it sounds, there's a lot of machines, filters, and complexity involved. U.S. aircraft carriers have adopted desalination as a way to keep the crew and sailors hydrated on long missions. Without the desalination process, the sailors and crew of aircraft carriers won't survive on sea for long. Desalination can be done using either thermal methods like distillation or membrane-based methods like reverse osmosis. The most common method of desalination used on U.S. carriers, however, is the membrane-based reverse osmosis. The process basically involves forcing seawater through a series of filters to remove the salt and other minerals to make it drinkable. One of the most important jobs on any U.S. carrier is the job of checking and maintaining the desalination machines on a regular basis. There is usually one or multiple crew members dedicated for this task, as the health and well-being of the entire crew depends on it. Desalination in aircraft carriers sounds all very new and technical, but it's really nothing new. In fact, the process of desalination has been around for thousands of years. In ancient times, people used to evaporate seawater to get rid of the salt and other impurities. Of course, their method was crude and small-scale, not very efficient, and took a lot of time and effort, but it worked. But with technological advancement over the centuries, scientists and engineers have developed more advanced methods of desalination, including distillation and reverse osmosis. Now, both distillation and reverse osmosis work to achieve the same result, but the two processes involve different steps and approaches. Distillation involves boiling seawater to create steam, which is then condensed into fresh water. Reverse osmosis, on the other hand, uses pressure to force water molecules through a semi-permeable membrane, leaving the salt and other impurities behind. Actually, that's simplifying it by a lot. The process of reverse osmosis can be summarized into the following five steps. 1. Pre-treatment. The first step is the pre-treatment level, where the water to be treated goes through a pre-treatment process where larger particles and impurities like sediment, chlorine, and other organic matter are removed. 2. Pressure. After the pre-treatment process is completed, the water is then put under high pressure, which helps to push it through a semi-permeable membrane. This membrane has very tiny pores that only allow water molecules to pass through, while blocking larger particles and impurities. 3. Separation In the separation stage, as the water is forced through the membrane, the impurities and contaminants are separated and left behind, forming what is called the reject stream. The clean water that passes through the membrane is collected as the permeate stream. 4. Post-treatment After the separation process is completed, the permeate stream is then treated to ensure that it is completely pure and safe for consumption. The treatment here may include processes like adding minerals back into the water for taste, adjusting pH levels, or further sterilizing the water with UV light or chlorine. Number 5. Storage After the post-treatment stage when the safety of the water is guaranteed, the purified water is then stored in a tank or container to be used as desired. Reverse osmosis was introduced into the Navy during the late 1980s, and almost immediately, reverse osmosis desalination plants quickly replaced the conventional water distillers formerly used by the shipboard production of fresh water because they were more effective and cheaper. The newer reverse osmosis plants also proved to be highly reliable, generally performing at levels exceeding 98%. The U.S. Navy has been using the reverse osmosis system to provide drinkable water for its ships for a long time. They were a safe and efficient means of getting drinkable water. 
However, the reverse osmosis desalinator machines consumed a huge chunk of shipboard fuel since they run off the same generators that power the ship's other systems. The unsustainability of these fuel inefficient desalinators led to the Navy making the research of a more fuel efficient way to deliver water top priority in 2004, and that was how the EU WP Gen 1 was developed. It worked quite well and saved more power. And by 2005, it was deployed to the Gulf Coast after Hurricane Katrina. Each day, it supplied 100,000 gallons of water daily to a Biloxi hospital, keeping 18 tanker trucks off the road. It was the best at the time, but the US Navy didn't stop with the EU WP Gen 1. It continued its search for more fuel-efficient ways to provide drinking water for long sea voyages and remote bases, and eventually, the US Navy was able to develop an extremely impressive second-generation desalination unit that uses 65% less energy than conventional technology. EU WP Gen 2 The Power Saving Expeditionary Unit Water Purification Program, or simply EU WP Gen 2, was designed with a high-efficiency pump and an energy recovery system to save more fuel than EU WP Gen 1. Not only that, using an experimental reverse osmosis system, the EU WP Gen 2 can also produce about twice as much usable water as conventional systems, without requiring any more space. But wait, it gets better. The EU WP Gen 2's unit is also about 40% smaller and lighter compared to conventional naval desalination systems. This is an extremely useful factor on cramped ships. But that's still not all. EU WP Gen 2 was also designed with crew efficiency in mind. One operator can start it up in less than 5 minutes, and it runs automatically after that. It also comes with a low-maintenance microfiltration step that involves no need to replace filters. The Office of Naval Research estimates that the entire unit of an EU WP Gen 2 requires 75% less maintenance than a conventional unit. Although the generators that power the EU WP Gen 2 unit still use conventional fuel, that could change. They could be adapted to run cost-effectively on solar power and other sustainable energy desalination could be done on a mass scale. The Navy is already looking beyond seagoing use for the EU WP Gen 2 and has deployed an earlier version of the technology to provide emergency water supply to disaster areas. But the Navy isn't the only one looking into desalination technology. Yale researchers are developing a desalination system that uses 90% less energy. A UK company called Seawater Greenhouse has also invented a low-energy distillation-based system that provides fresh water for greenhouse crops. Today, desalination is used all over the world to provide fresh water for millions of people. In fact, in many parts of the world, desalination is the only source of fresh water. Desalination plants are used in countries such as Israel, Saudi Arabia, and Australia, where fresh water is scarce. Desalination is also used in the oil and gas industry to treat wastewater, which can then be reused for other purposes. Even in the US, desalination is becoming a popular method of water treatment, especially in states like California, where droughts are common. The Navy's desalination plants may be helpful in establishing a water supply should California face a water shortage due to a natural disaster. The largest naval base on the West Coast is in San Diego, California. The Navy's Southwest Region Command Headquarters in San Diego has 46 surface ships of various types, including two aircraft carriers, 16 destroyers, eight cruisers, and seven nuclear-powered submarines, and each one of these vessels has RO desalination capability. Each aircraft carrier can produce up to 200,000 gallons of drinkable water daily, the destroyers and cruisers each create 12,000 gallons of fresh water per day, while each submarine produces 5,000 gallons per day. In short, all 53 ships and submarines based in San Diego could manufacture as much as 1,217,000 gallons of fresh water each day. That equals 3.7 acre feet of water per day, or 1,350 acre feet per year, and the whole of San Diego County 
uses around 450,000 acre feet of water per year. While the total Navy RO desalination production of potable water in San Diego is not close to replacing all of San Diego County's fresh water needs, these Navy vessels are a reliable source of water in an emergency. But of course, we also need to consider that all of the Navy ships are not always present in port at the same time, so the actual amount of fresh water produced would depend on which ships were in port and available. The desalination process is not just important for sailors on U.S. Navy aircraft carriers. It's an important technology that helps provide fresh water to millions of people around the world, plays an important role in industries such as oil and gas, and could very well be the answer to water scarcity on Earth. But even though desalination has come a long way since ancient times, there are still challenges that need to be overcome. One of the biggest challenges is that it takes a lot of energy to remove the salt and other minerals from seawater. The cost of desalination is another major issue. According to Forbes, a reverse osmosis unit for a home could cost up to $7,500. Now imagine how much a reverse osmosis unit on a gigantic aircraft carrier would cost. However, researchers are constantly working to develop new methods and technologies that make desalination more efficient and cost-effective for both aircraft carriers and for on-land uses. But let's take our minds off the cost of desalination for a minute. Isn't it amazing that we can take something as abundant as seawater and turn it into something as essential as fresh drinking water? I think it's pretty amazing. Imagine all the problems that can be solved once desalination technology's potential is fully harnessed. Countries and places that face drought every year could finally have water and all of humanity no longer has to be afraid of where we'll get water in the future since seawater is virtually endless. Do you think desalination is the answer to water scarcity on Earth? Leave your thoughts in the comments. So there you have it, the fascinating process of how US aircraft carriers turn seawater into fresh drinking water. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to leave a comment or a blue heart for the US Navy. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our future videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.